Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today is a good day. It's already the afternoon, which I don't know how that happened. My day, my morning just flew by. We have our new training with us, trainee, our new trainee with us, and he is um, doing his first inspection this afternoon. So whenever we have a new trainee, what we always do is we meet up at the office first and we kind of introduce them to the software. We show them how to open up the kitchen, how to begin a report and uh, then he gets to implement it on a real home inspection with our lead inspector Josh. So I'm here just to kind of help supervise, see what's going on. I like to stay out of their way and I like let, I like to let Josh do his job. Let's see what we're going to find and let's go check it out. Okay, we're going to start on the roof. Uh, pretty good looking roof. We did find some minor things up here. Oh, there's three things that uh, concern me on this roof. Uh, we do have some hail damage and then we also have some um, uh, damage around the chimney that we want to pay attention to in the attic space. And then there's also uh, some questionable roof repairs in the valley over here. Let's watch the new guy get off the roof. Gotcha. <laughs> he didn't die. Not <laughs> first roof walk. All right, so we opened up the panel box on this older home. It is an Eaton brand panel box, uh, but we noticed that there are they've installed square D breakers, uh, and manufacturers do not allow that. Um, these breakers are made for the specific brand of panel box. Uh, that is the same manufacturer. So I always like to wiggle on this a little bit and see this one's a little bit loose. These are uh, not made to be installed on a different brand of panel box. Another find that we find common is uh, we like to wriggle the ground rod and you can see it's uh, the clamp is a little loose so we just recommend to tighten it up a bit. It's hot out this summer, but it's even hotter in this panel box. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so uh, what he did there is he opened up the panel box and the first thing we noticed is uh, you got some burn marks back there and uh, that could be a combination of mismatched breakers. and. That parental box, there's a good chance it's going to have to be replaced. It's a really good find from uh, Josh's, for Josh's inspection there. That's why they pay me the big bucks. The big bucks. <laughs> so uh, also right here, there's also a double wired breaker. So people have been adding stuff to this panel box that probably are not licensed electricians. So great write up. Probably one of the biggest finds that we're going to find on this nice flip here. All right, this is Josh. Chris is making me get up in this crazy hot attic again because he's a mean boss. Just kidding. So we had uh, several things up here. Again, this is an old home. I believe it's 1996. Uh, obviously, first issue is going to be this flue pipe is separated on the top of the water heater. So your water heater, anytime it's running, is going to emit carbon monoxide into your attic space, uh, which is a very dangerous, dangerous situation. Uh, we also have the, the pan is rusted through in the back corner, so looks like they maybe had a previous water leak. Not necessarily this unit, but uh, some point in the past. Um, over here, we have the same situation for the AC pan drain. Uh, pan is uh, rusted through, so that rust right there. Uh, we had old water stains in the bedroom below that, so we're going to check that with our moisture meter, make sure it's not uh, actively, there's no active moisture anymore. Um, you have our AC primary drain right here. You can see the insulation stops there. We can see all the the mildew growth and then uh, you have some condensation stains on the decking so the water inside the slime is really cold coming out of the AC so it's condensating and creating these water stains. Not a, a huge problem we just want to uh, wrap that in more insulation. Uh, you can't tell from the video but it's really really hot in this attic which can uh, wear out the life expectancy of your roof covering and also uh, keep your upstairs hot so we're going to recommend some uh, better ventilation uh, in this roof structure. Thanks, Josh. Coming down. For the second time. It's, it's not hot or anything up there, is it? It's like dripping sweat. Another thing that uh, makes our reports on the outside here is uh, this deck. All the handrails are loose, and uh, you can really see a significant slope here in the middle and uh, there's a lot of rotted wood. So we actually have a deck section on the lower por portion of our report 
Uh, one good sign though about this tech, I know it's kind of good I guess, uh, I, we can't see underneath it to find like termite damage or termites, but one thing I did notice is right back here, there's signs of termite treat, a uh, previous termite treatment. So there's a good chance uh, that they treated for termites along the backside of the property here. So we don't see any termites coming in right now. Uh, but what we want to do is uh, document it, let the, the home buyer know that the deck's in poor condition and this is a conducive condition for termites, and, uh, but the property has been treated, which is a good sign. So when we were taking the temperature, uh, this register right here is blowing out about 67, but this register over here is blowing about 60. So we know that the duct systems aren't balanced very well, and what he's going to do here is He's pulling out the infrared camera to help identify some of those water stains that we see if they're active or not. But we also use it to reconfirm our thermal imaging, our thermal thermometer. That one. <laughs> the temp gun. The temp gun. <laughs> we try to make sure that uh, we are double confirming the temperatures that we got off the units. Registers. Wow. This is a that's a that's a good segment right there. What a new. New. <laughs> Predator. So what do we got coming out of that vent over there? Yeah, that's a 62. 60. Then you had 67 with the temp gun, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so one might, of those is not calibrated, right? I bet it's the temp gun. Probably, yeah. Yeah, that, that camera is just a little pricey. Got a little mis insulation. I would say that's pretty normal for the age of the property, but um, cool. yeah, this is there. there. Right there, and then what's the temperature coming out of that register over there? Oh, about 55. 56. So it's still about a six or seven degree difference between the two. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty decent. Yeah, I guess between the two temperature guns, you're still re re registering a significant temperature uh, decrease there. So, what we like to do with the infrared. Uh, is we step in and then he'll scan the room from one side and then he scans the room from another angle just to make sure that he covers the, the whole room. Also don't forget the closets. You want to always look up in the closets because it's an easy spot uh, to forget to look at. Alright yeah. so um, right here what we do is uh, we use the protimeter, protimeter, protimeter. <laughs> Jeez, Chris, get back from vacation already. We noticed that there's uh, some heavy leaking around a lot of the windows, and we like to double check to prove that they are leaking uh, at the time. And there you go. We got active uh, moisture on the property. So it's a, what we always like to do is double check and confirm our findings because if someone just says, hey, the window's leaking, the client could come or the seller could come back and just say that's old. But we proved that it's an active water leak at the time of the inspection. Uh, one more thing that Josh mentioned as he walked away was uh, that didn't show up on the infrared camera at all. And a lot of people get the infrared camera confused uh, with being, some, being able to detect moisture. But remember an infrared camera only detects temperature difference. So what happens is, is this window leaks. It's been a few days since it's rained. The water that's sitting in there, the moisture that's sitting in there, turns the same temperature as the wall. So the infrared camera won't even show any signs of moisture at all. So that's why it's a good idea to just double check with your moisture meter in some of these hot spots just to see if you have active water. And today we did. I almost forgot to do the close for the video. I apologize. A lot was happening, a lot of talking, and I don't really think I got the filming that I really would want to on that property because it was actually a really good structure. All I kind of did was show some of the bad stuff. Forgot to show some of the good stuff on it. As a home inspector, you know, a lot of people are interested in all the broken stuff, but remember there's a lot of good things about that structure too as well. The roof overall was in a good condition. The foundation was good. There was no real major plumbing issues on the property either. When you're breaking down a property and you're looking to purchase it, you know, you still want the list of the three major things, things you're going to negotiate on or things that you're going to need to fix immediately moving into the structure. So the very first one is obviously that panel box. It's a fire hazard and can eventually actually catch the property on fire because of the arcing that's happening in that panel box. So we put that as number one item that needs to be repaired. Number two is the HVAC. 
that HVAC system really wasn't removing the humidity out of the structure. We were getting anywhere from like 11 differential in some areas and 15 in the others and that's what we look for is a 15 differential but it still didn't feel good in the property humidity wasn't being removed out of the structure so they know their need to work on you know service the ac system or budget to replace it goodman units are not the best units uh that we've noticed they are the cheapest brand and fail the fastest and i do think they have about a 10-year lifespan on those type of units and then number three was the flu. The flu needs to be uh, repaired immediately because the flu can leak carbon dioxide back into the structure and cause some sort of health issues for anyone living upstairs. So they need to add, they need to fix it. So remember whenever you're purchasing a property or the things you're gonna negotiate on, anything that's gonna cause livability issues or long-term damage to the structure, um, you want to focus on. So that's Chris with the action. If you have any home inspection questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get to it and catch us on the next one. See you guys, bye.